the tail of things. The setting moves to later in 1791. The excise tax has been passed in the national legislature. It is also being enforced. Taxes are collected, as you well know. Federal officers have been dispatched to frontier towns like Bassett Town to collect those taxes. One of them is George Clymer. If you were here an hour ago, you would have seen him personally receiving orders from Secretary Alexander Hamilton. Now, back in the day, many of the newspapers that reported on the issues were inclined to take a side. And so the news wasn't as perhaps balanced as we might expect it to be today. However, there was one paper, the Philadelphia Gazette, that took a more unique approach and tried to present an objective story. Now back in the time, there were a great number of folk who could not read well, so it wasn't uncommon for newspapers to be read aloud in the public square. In the East, our nation's capital, Philadelphia, Independence Hall. Attorney General Edmund Randolph has been charged by Secretary Hamilton with reading aloud from an article in the Philadelphia Gazette, one that addresses the issue of the excise tax and also the ensuing result in frontier towns. Just back from his trip to Philadelphia, another month-long voyage, David Bradford has returned to Bassett Town, he too will be reading aloud to his friends and neighbors. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to gather around. First, we will draw our attention to the east in Philadelphia, and then also, alternatively, to the west here in Washington. Notice the reactions of two very different crowds as they hear the very same words. Secretary Hamilton. I thought you should see this article from the Philadelphia Gazette. It offers a perspective on the Excise Act even you may not have realized. Well, then why not let all of Congress hear how their tax is being implemented, Mr. Randolph? And let's hear how the frontier and the people on it are responding to it in comparison to polite society. Marshal Lennox, kindly beg the square's attention. Ladies and gentlemen of Philadelphia, Treasury Secretary and Attorney General have an announcement. Silence! Here now, the Attorney General. In March, the government accepted the passing of the Excise Act. This act imposed a tax on distilled spirits with its primary purpose to tax whiskey to combat the substantial government debt. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring news of a whiskey tax from the Philadelphia Gazette. In March, the government accepted the passing of the Excise Act. This act imposed a tax on distilled spirits with its primary purpose to tax whiskey to combat the substantial government debt. Farmers and settlers west of the Appalachians have shown a deep resentment to this new tax. The people of western Pennsylvania have proved especially irksome to the new administration. Many fear these events could be a prelude to open rebellion. <laughs> open rebellion? Yeah, it could be open rebellion. How do they expect us to pay this tax? Is this not something that you had fought for us, to fought against? And now they put it on anyway. They have not heeded your words. They know we can't pay our taxes. Of course, there'll be open rebellion. Huzzah! Huzzah! That's all the more reason for us to keep cool heads. Community leaders like us. Now, we don't want more bloodshed in our streets. John, please, hear him out. All right, please, David, continue. In March, the government accepted the passing of the Excise Act. This act imposed a tax on distilled spirits with its primary purpose to tax whiskey to combat the substantial government debt. Many fear these events could be a prelude to open rebellion. As the actions of Western frontiersmen escalate, they expose the complete weakness of the national party. President Washington himself. Hear, hear! 
President Washington himself has declared that many persons in the western parts of Pennsylvania have at length been hardly enough to perpetuate acts which I am advised to amount to treason. Treason! Huzzah! 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 Mr. Lennox, please. <laughs> many persons in the western parts of Pennsylvania have at length been hardy enough to perpetrate acts which I may advise amount to treason, being overt acts of levying war against the United States. Against the United States? I fought for this country before it was a country, before it had rights. I froze with General Washington at Valley Forge and bled with him. If it's a war they want, it's a war they'll get! I'm on your side, you know that. I understand the traditional part. But maybe David's right. Maybe we can be relaxed. You follow the men of the big battle. Ask, let us take you right now. Rachel. Over acts of levying war against the United States. But the rioting of these backwoods hooligans has been little more than a protest that does not warrant the use of the word treason. Not treason! Mr. Randolph, while the Philadelphia Gazette is clearly one of Benjamin Franklin's greatest achievements, clearly it is not living up to his high standards. Surely we have wasted enough of the Commonwealth's time with this rag. Secretary Hamilton, you ask me to send dispatches to all major publications. That must include the Gazette as well. Never mind that. Sir. Let's allow these people to return to their business. Sir, there is a valid point to the frontier's arguments, as this article suggests. Uh, there is a distinct possibility that while we intend to equally distribute the responsibility of the taxation, it is disproportionately affecting Vassal Town and the like. Are you siding with these madmen against the United States? No, sir. I have no formal yeah. challenge to you at this time. <laughs> then let's proceed. Thank you. 